Gotta make sure my mic is on. Hello everyone, how are ya? Hopefully things are going good for you today. I am Will, this is Cookies Enabled, the live show. And uh, next to me here is Andrew. And uh, we are definitely uh, a little behind today. Sorry about that everybody. We're usually live right at noon. Um, <clears throat> it's been a rough week for me. And uh, I know Jaeger uh, is right in the middle of moving. Uh, so that is probably a reason why we were all a little bit behind today. Um, just a struggle, struggle bus of a of a go. But uh, I, we got some massive lag on my end for some reason. I'm super sorry, everybody. Hopefully this comes through a little smoother here in a few minutes as my computer loads. But uh, we got a lot of good news for you guys today. Uh, we got some interesting news. Uh, we're definitely going to have a lot of spoilers with the Godzilla vs. Kong movie. So if you haven't seen that yet, we'll definitely warn you before we get to that section. Uh, but we're going to be spoiling the hell out of that movie. It's a great... I liked it. Andrew has a lot of problems with this movie. <laughs> and rightfully so. I'm probably going to agree with these problems and still tell you it's a good movie. Um... But we'll get to that. So we'll get to that. Um, we have uh, CERN news, NASA news, E3 news, vaccine news, all kinds of news. Uh, so we're gonna dive right in. Um, well, why don't we start with um, well, why don't we start with CERN? Because I've been we've been hitting on this the last couple of weeks. We got no SpaceX news today. Uh, no surprise there. They're still setting up um, and getting things ready. So no news from them. Uh, but CERN has been uh, really pretty much blown away by this latest discovery um they've got all kinds of new science and math and things coming out 
Um, and uh, really, I pulled up their website for you here so you can take a look at this instead of the little videos playing. Um, but this is a great example of what the, they're looking at here. As you can see, that, that this has these little cones, um, and this is showing the different uh, you know particles breaking apart um, inside the machine. And that's really what they're doing here. You know, I know we've just we've just explained this a few times before, um, but this is probably one of the coolest pieces of physics on the planet. Um, and just you know, mechanical engineering—it's just unbelievable. Um, Here's another amazing graph of the different things. But they have discovered these moons do not decay, move, react at all with our standard model of physics. And uh, <clears throat> that means that you can probably throw your current physics textbooks in the trash, uh, which I know a lot of you probably wanted to do for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a feeling that we're going to be getting a lot of new equations and um, learning a lot of new information about um, not just... Our, you know, matter and how it interacts with each other, uh, but how um, new ways of, of possibly controlling matter. Um, and so this could be really revolutionary. Hopefully, um, we get a lot new uh, uh, math from this too, um, which would help kind of propel the future of science, technology, um, you know, mechanics, all those goodies. I'm super excited about this. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I don't know if Andrew is. He seems real quiet. <laughs> Just waiting for you. No, it seems uh, that there's been a lot happening with that. There's a, I think there's also a new, um, there, there's a new theory. I mean, it's very, very, very young and like. Yeah, this is all super they're new They're trying science. to do the math to see if the universe would work without dark energy. Yep. And that there might be something else of that. It's that would be interesting. Be interesting. I'm excited yeah. to hear the theory. Um, but yeah, so definitely check out their website, guys, if you haven't. Um, there's a ton of new news on here, and they always have cool um, updates and, and whatnot. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys that. Um, and really wanted to touch on that today, too. Let me close that so you're not getting random pop-ups on your screen out there. Anyway, so... Every... Every uh, window that you close when we're done with it might drop your lag, too. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's already going down a little bit here, which is fantastic. Hopefully it catches up like a little more. I feel like part of it might be that... Uh... No, no, you don't have the same one. If, well, if you're on the... If one of them, I know the one for the uh, vaccine that I'm going to talk about. It's yeah. got a lot of like animations at the top. See, of I the didn't page pull that one up, there. though. Yeah, surprisingly, that one is not slowing me down. The only other one I got is the NASA one open, and surprisingly, I don't know why, I, I, it's just weird. It's weird that one is, is slowing me down. Anyway, it should, uh, it is going down, just a, a lot slower than usual, which is un strange. Maybe my computer's trying to hold back an update or something, probably. Thanks, Microsoft. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, E3. Let's jump on E3 really quick, since this is a really tiny topic. Uh, it just is kind of hitting the big guys that they probably won't be able to have a giant theater full of thousands of press people. I wonder and, why. <laughs> I know, right? Um, maybe we can't do this like we used to. So they're realizing uh, this whole digital trend takeover uh, with online everything now. <clears throat> so they are literally trying to uh, make E3 an all online event. And I think this is a huge, uh, huge step forward. I really think that we will go back to the show floor and that will happen, um, like where press will be let in and, you know, you can see and play certain, you know, hands-on demos of games and systems and stuff. So I think, I think we will get back to that, but we are like a couple of years away from safety uh, precautions that go along with that. We don't have... The technology available for thousands of press people standing side by side in these huge things. Even stuff you're seeing on TV that's supposedly live isn't necessarily, you know, like the crowds you're seeing aren't really crowds. Those are old, old things. They're just cropping in to make it look like there's people there, um, which I think is kind of funny. Um, I was noticing that with the mass Singer. It shows a, a little blip at the bottom of the screen that says all, all audience things are, have been filmed in a safe location not near anybody else and la 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 and used from other seasons and so very intriguing how they do that ma m kind of tv magic stuff but i really think e3 
I think this is actually going to be a good thing for E3 because there, people like me have never really been able to go. Um, so now mm -hmm. I actually can get a digital pass to see and watch everything just like the press would. Mm -hmm. And that is cool. That's so cool. Well, they, they made it press only years ago, I remember. Yes. It used to be just like a big expo for everybody. But yeah. Then, yep. And that was sick because that was one of the years I was like, maybe this year I'll finally get to go to E3. Not right, right. And then it was like, nope, now nope. Now I just have to wait for it to show up on YouTube. You. <laughs> I know, I know. And it will, and I'm not I'm not concerned. Um, I know they'll probably do a live stream like with YouTube and Twitch and all the big guys. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, these are the big guys for the most part. You're talking about Microsoft and Sony, um, as well as every major gaming company uh from you know capcom down really i mean that there isn't a name that they usually don't have um there's a few that protest occasionally um or do their own thing like it didn't sony pull out one of the years and was like we're gonna do our own thing and then i think so it, and then they were like just kidding it, just kidding guys <laughs> like we're coming back <laughs> i don't i don't know what happened there i want to say they were just kind of tired of it being like a giant press battle and like who can get the first you know biggest news break and whatnot and uh, i don't i don't know it just doesn't seem i feel like we need to get back to the people it was supposed to be about the gamers it was supposed to be about the games and the systems and the hardware and not about this whole press explosion thing that they have going on so um and i think that's this uh, push to the digital e3 is going to be a way more refocus for the companies because they can get back to us and kind of skip the middleman in this case which is the press sorry guys i hate i mean i'm technically the press right now myself so um you know i, I am reporting that i won't be reporting on e3 i guess i mean we're going to have an e3 show but it's probably going to be something totally different <laughs> yeah we haven't really even planned that out yet just so you know <laughs> But yeah, we'll figure By the way, everybody, say hello to the nice little um, rotating logo that we have up in the corner. Oh, I yeah. spent all morning trying. I know nothing about <laughs> FX, but I had it, it was so much work. Um, we'll try turning off that logo because oh, it's maybe... a bigger GIF. So that oh, might it is. be. Is that my lag of... issue? Bye, logo. Oh, yeah, it's fallen already. 48.5. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to rework the logo size. I might it's... be, I might be able to shrink the GIF on my side too. It's just a recapture. It's, essentially, I don't a want little... it to be full 1080p. I just need it to be, yeah, maybe. you know, thumb stamp size. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, it, it might be the res get smaller. Uh... Sorry, my cat is trying to get my attention. <laughs> Anyway, I'll take the original uh, Illustrator file and I'll shrink the video down to a better size. But no, I just I, I, I saw it in the corner rotating and that would pause and rotate. I'm thinking maybe that's pulling yeah, some lag. It shouldn't. It's not that big of a file. It but. really shouldn't, but you know how it goes. So, okay. The other thing we wanted to talk about was the NASA flight um, and the delay they have going on right now. So let me pull up that image for you guys. Boop, there it is. Yeah, I was really hoping hoping that we'd see this uh, helicopter fly. Me so too. Far. I mean, they uh, did the first test. Yeah. They got the rotors to move, but it um, it, they had to shut down the test early, I guess. Um, apparently, <laughs> there's an issue with its flight controller software. Oh. So they paused the test and decided we're gonna we're gonna wait we we're working on the problem it sh it's not doesn't look like it's anything that right, bad right. but they basically have to modify and reinstall oh. this software okay, now that's normally not that would be easy yeah, here but you could you know fix a few lines of code upload it to a drone and you'd be ready to go yeah. in minutes <clears throat> but you also now have the um, amount of time it takes to s what well, it's 10 min 10 11 minutes to send the data to Mars, yeah. and because because of the distance, because of just the capabilities, they can't really upload, you know, like I don't know what a 300 megabyte uh, piece of right. software and have it compiled, installed that quickly. You've got to send it in small chunks, so then it has to rebuild itself and 
then that's on curiosity. Yeah. Then it has to transmit that to the drone. It's a whole. So it's going to take them yep. a while to. Uh, uh, but I'm sure they're going to get it up there. They're going to test, make sure the software works, make sure there aren't any bugs, that it won't crash. And they're hoping that we'll uh, set a flight date by next week. So it's it, it, it's still going to happen. Um, it, it would really would have sucked to have sent that oh, thing out. Oh, yeah. And just be like, no, nope, it's dead. Never, Never going to work. <laughs> But it was a secondary mission, so it's not necessary. Right. But it is really going to help out with. Um, it's going to help out a lot with what the um, rover right. can do. The Curiosity rover. This will be able to get aerial views. I think it's got like a ninety meter uh, wow. range. It can fly for ninety seconds, maybe further. But it'll be able to map right. the surface. They can look for um, possible research sites. Hmm. So they know where they have to send the rover instead of just kind of wandering and exploring based on satellite sure. photos. This gets a better image and can really show them um, to do. Right. And that's awesome. I mean, because this thing is, it, it looks amazing. They obviously spent years building <laughs> this thing and getting it perfect for Mars. Uh, just to find out that it, it just needs a, a simple software update, which, like you said, would be a breeze here on, the, on planet Earth. But uh, being planets away is a totally different uh, behemoth of a problem. Um, now, I really feel like, because can it remote connect to the the base itself, right? Like the original rover, can't that be like its main well, that's, computer, technically? Yeah, they speak to each other. That's how we're going to get the, vi the video footage. Um, I right, so it, can't they force the rover to, to be like the admin to reinstall the well, new software, technically? I think okay, so, I mean, that's... Because the rover has the receivers to get the signal from Earth, but right. still have to use time on that rover to take the software right uh, reassemble the file because they have well, to send it in small packets so you have to say what's the delay the like make sure 15 minutes or something <laughs> right and make right. sure there aren't any Ugh. corrupt uh bits on there and then send it to the rover it's I, <laughs> and what do you want to guess the packet size is that they can send to mice because i honestly don't know that i'm not sure uh, isn't that an interesting question i was just thinking that what do you think how much at once can they throw at that rover? Because it can't be much. I mean, you have to go, like, millions of miles here. So, and you've got all kinds of obstacles and stuff usually, too. So, I mean, not a ton. It's a lot of space. But it's not much of an obstacle. But <laughs> I don't know what their bandwidth is. I really don't. That, that's I, I, I just can't imagine it being more than, like, a normal T1 connection with, like, at least a 15 or a 50... 15 minute delay uh, both way. So at least a 30 minute standard delay. But yowza, that'd be ridiculous delays of communication. I mean, I, I, mean, I always I wonder why they don't some, have the. It takes them like 20 minutes to download one of the nice photos, that sort of thing. Right. Um, That's not so terrible. So they must have found a way to boost it. Satellite relays? Who knows? Who knows? Well, I, I I'm sure NASA has some tricks up their sleeves. Yeah, they use a satellite relay over Mars. So, yeah, it comes from here to a satellite, to a satellite over Mars, to the rover. Right. It, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it's it's, it's got to be some kind of system, like because otherwise it just wouldn't make it. I mean, you can do it, but, yeah, we're talking, like, crazy, crazy problematic. And I don't even know how much information we might be able to find on that. <laughs> like, we should, but. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Mars.nasa.com. The data rate uh, direct to Earth varies from about 500 bits per second. Bits. Okay. To 32,000 bits per second. Roughly half as fast as a standard home modem. Yeah. Data rate <laughs> to the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is uh, so selected it's... automatically and continuously during communications and can be as high as 2 million, 2 megabits, basically. So, so it's, it's slow. It's like a, a T1. <laughs> You're getting maybe five meg on a good day. <laughs> oh, yeah, a T1 is going to give you 500. T1, oh, yeah. No, T1, I'm thinking we, old school uh, 90s a T1. Lab I used to work at, we had a T1 line for the whole place. I mean, we were running many websites and a lot of data through that. Um, so we needed it. 
Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's an 80,000 80, square foot facility with probably 30 or 40 machines of one type or another connected to that right. line at once. So it was... But yeah, Good so times. 500 bits, that's not fast at all. No. You're not doing much with that kind of... But then again, you're not, you're not you know, doing... It's half as fast as a modem, then 500 yeah. is... I mean, that's that's pretty what, bad. What, 56K kind of territory there? And also, remember, they only have a certain amount of time to send right. a signal until that satellite passes. So it's probably not even a... Um, I may be completely wrong, but it's probably not even a difference in... They don't have to worry so much about the bit rate. Right. They have to worry about how... Okay, this is the bit rate. This is how long we have to send one packet. Sure. So <laughs> we can't send data for more than this amount of time until it has to switch to the next satellite. Absolutely. Or, or, you know, there's a lot of people at NASA right now that are just, you know, rubbing their temples <laughs> and keeping the local Starbucks in business. Oh, God, right? yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. I'm sure they have a Starbucks in the <laughs> you know, I'd be it'd be a shame if they didn't. Starbucks, you need to get on that. What what you doing? <laughs> Those people need your help. <laughs> uh, so on a totally different note, <laughs> let's jump to Godzilla versus Kong. So again, big spoilers here, everybody. We are going to really rip this thing apart. Um, so yeah, I right off the bat, have a major issue with the title. <laughs> when, if I'm going to a movie that says, like, Jane falls down a well, I'm expecting her to fall down a well at some point in the movie. I mean, you can't, can't give me a kind of title like that. Technically, Godzilla and Kong do fight, but it's not what you think. And so that's what really makes me mad, is that it's kind of false advertising just in itself. So... That's my biggest punch towards this one at the moment. I know uh, Andrew's going to have all kinds of massive... <laughs> right? <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> uh, just because there's always stuff. I just don't care that much. Sci-fi is sci-fi. Uh, you know, it's, and that's why I just don't... I don't even care to pick it apart too much. But that I just love to hear it. So, anyway. I will let you... Uh, do your bashing <laughs> well first i'm gonna say i i enjoyed it i very like, much I, enjoyed it as well i did enjoy the movie as a whole um oh uh, yeah there are many bad movies that i enjoy from the beginning to the end yeah um the power rangers reboot i actually did not it, see that you need to watch really it. it's horrible it's it's a bad movie <laughs> but it's a wonderfully fun movie, mm. and if you grew up with Power Rangers, the nostalgia level <laughs> in it, just, that's why you care. That's oh, okay. why you just soak up every second, because okay. I'm, like, I'm watching this, like, this is my childhood. <laughs> Same with Transformers, I can watch all of them yes. back to back. I, I can't do I three, I just, I can't do now, the third I, one, but. Now, I grew up with Godzilla too. I okay. watched, like, I remember as a kid, yep. my dad would take me to the video store. Mm -hmm. And I'd rent, we'd rent like two Godzillas at once, and I'd watch them. And I've probably seen all million all of, of them. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, multiple times. I'd rent them a week, week after week, or sure, uh, just so I've loved a lot of the Godzillas that have come out. Um, I even enjoyed that weird one with Matthew Broderick, the American yeah. one. Shoot, what was the name? But and, I don't oh, think yeah. of that as a real Godzilla movie. No. The most recent ones, what, Godzilla King of the Monsters, I saw that in theaters. Hmm. And that blew my mind. That was so beautiful. I don't know if I saw that one. It, it, spoilers for everybody. I may have uh, choked up a slight bit when Mothra finally <laughs> unveils, is unveiled and the wings. Because it was just the music, every, a beautiful sedan just... Yeah. Staring up like this is so cool. <laughs> Fights, everything was great. Yeah. This one, okay, visually, it was great. Visually, yeah, visually, graphically, that blew my mind. I would love to know the statistics that it took to make um, this movie. 
Like, what computer power did they have to do? Because holy crap. <laughs> that, that, that was great. I loved it visually. The story wasn't bad. It was pretty good. Um, it was easy to predict. It, I'll give you that. Yeah, it, it was very, um, <clears throat> like, just, what, formulaic, sort of. Yeah, PG-13 um, is what I'd put this there, You're not, you know, breaking your brain <laughs> trying to figure this one out. <laughs> spoiler to everybody, we've already said it, but just so you know, yeah. um, if you're tuning in live and you didn't know spoilers, I apologize. Yeah, massive spoilers. You have, did you say spoilers in the description? I think so. Oh, maybe not. I, I hope so. <laughs> Uh, I will when I when I post this on YouTube, <laughs> but uh, not on this uh, original thing. But I've stated it multiple times. Lots of spoilers. It looks like we're the, we've only got yeah. one viewer, we'll so we're good. Spoilers every second, so if someone comes in <laughs> exactly. uh, in live, they'll be fine. So spoilers, yeah. It's been long enough. Yeah. If you, and it's king. It's well, been a couple uh, of weeks at least. And so, Mortal Kombat's coming okay. out, I think, in a couple of days on HBO Max and in theaters. So I'm super excited about that. But this, mm -hmm. yeah, this movie really wasn't bad, but um, it really should not be called Godzilla vs. Kong. It really should be Godzilla and Kong vs. Uh, what the heck is the dude's name? Um, Mega, Godzilla. Mega Godzilla. Thank you. With that thing, Thank you. when I realized that that's what they were working on... Uh, that's when I started jumping up and down, like, we're going to see Mechagodzilla. No, I this had, is going to be so cool. I had figured and that I, out I, I relatively like quickly. It looked pretty cool. It was... The, all of the action scenes, all the fights, all of that, I thought that was great. Actually, yeah. Some of the stuff... The two big things that bothered me were, where the hell did they get all of this anti-grab technology for Thank these you. flying... Thank you. Thanks, because in the previous one, yes, they had extremely advanced technology, <laughs> but... but not like... It's only been four years since the right. first one. Um, I mean, I guess maybe they were close to finishing it because they had things like Monarch. Oh, true. That's true. The technology to keep these beasts uh, <clears throat> locked away. I mean, that that is pretty high tech. Yeah, it's like a Truman it, Show it kind of dome. Showy. It seemed a little too. What the hell? Yeah. Um, so those are small concerns. My biggest concern, and I have had this since the first, since Godzilla, King of the Monsters, is the moment they mention Hollow Earth. <laughs> and I'm like, really? <laughs> You're going to go with that? I'm like, well, we'll catch up with Godzilla by going through the Hollow Earth. <laughs> you could have just written it so that it's like, you know... Uh, flash forward one week later when we finally get to Antarctica or a few days. Yeah. Just that. And the way they made it in this, how flipping through gravity It doesn't forces, make any sense. And there's a portal that gets them there also made no sense to me. And how, how did they survive it? I don't uh, know. How, how did anything survive it? And they give some half-assed answer of these ships will protect That's us. That's literally all they say is that the ship will like, protect you. <laughs> But There's then no it more. makes the hollow earth look like a big, giant Dyson sphere. Yeah. And a Dyson sphere would have to be a hell of a lot larger, because in the center, you need a full-size star. Yes. Yes. I guess you could come up with some uh, artificial sun, but right. in order to provide, the, I think, the amount of heat, the amount of light, you'd have to build a planet around a whole star. Yeah, so you'd have talking... to make like a mini star, essentially, like a really micro star, which to us would be like the center of the planet. You could put a white dwarf there, but yeah. then gravity is good. You're... So, and you'd be dying I from the radiation because you have no ozone. <laughs> yeah, you don't it have doesn't ozone make there. any sense. The physics don't work. I'm sorry. I love Hollow yeah, Earth I... as a theory, but it is total crap, and I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, it, it, at least in this representation, especially in this movie, the way they show it, you wouldn't even have sunlight if it was the two versions that they're showing you. How you wouldn't have enough space for another, for light to get in. So how are they even seeing anything uh, made no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, now, well, the scenic the scene, amazingness of it is cool, but... Sun in the background, so they're, they're just CGIing in some weird sun. But did anybody think just... you're, you're in between two spherical layers? How is there a sun off in the distance? Does anybody have get to be directly in the center of the Earth, but then... I, I mean, I get it's it sci-fi. It, it doesn't work. 
<laughs> None of it worked. Me about it, it was, it things happened enough that it would pull me out of the experience. Right. And that's the thing. I can watch a horrible movie, one that's just bad. Right. One that just like even you look at it and think this should not have been made. Exactly. But or you can get still get just emotionally and uh, just zoned into them. Right. You can watch them, enjoy them, and even be aware that they're bad, but once in a while something will happen that'll just pull you out of the story and you realize, oh yeah, I'm watching a movie. Wait, what was that? Yeah. And it seemed like it happened too many times in this it one really compared did. to other movies that I've seen. That's my real issue with it. I still, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. But it is... Um, not, not scientifically not accurate in any way, shape, or form, um, nor does any of the science fiction technology even come close to anything we could make in reality. Um, well, that's the point behind science fiction. I mean, absolutely. I mean, this is, I, I just have to emphasize the fiction because, I mean, the, the way they just like nonchalantly, especially with those ships, like, these ships will get you to the center. And that's legit all the signs they gave. At least in the core, they tried to give you some kind of explanation as to how the ship isn't going to sh be crushed into a can. But, you know. The core is, <clears throat> if the core can keep, the core is like the worst science fiction movie ever. I, I love that movie. but <laughs> He would do a, a lock-in with his students okay. every year at the, end of the, at the end of the school year. And they would just watch really bad sci-fi movies <laughs> or really old or really cheesy like you'd have right um some of them would be good yeah but they'd always have some really really bad ones in there <laughs> but they'd always play the core laugh because <laughs> it's that bad and th by the way these are a bunch of base like math and physics students right it with them. oh my uh, god so they're just ripping so it apart i'm sure throwing pop I'm sure they're throwing popcorn and having fun. Oh, yes. The court can keep my attention for the whole thing. <laughs> and I love that, despite it. Yeah. And this can't. That's... Oh, like, when wow. it comes to bad movies, if... My rubric, I think, is the core. Yeah. If... Just because it's so bad, but it's so good. Celine. No. It's... Sorry. I'm probably being too unfair to the film. No. I'm... I don't it know. Was, it, was, it was. I mean, it's been a box office, well, box office slash streaming hit. I yeah. know. It is nice that these are coming out, and I can just go, you know, HBO Max, or uh, that's where most of the movies are. That or CBS, but HBO Max is the one where pretty much all these big movies are. Uh, yeah, almost so, all of HBO is definitely leading the streaming revolution right now. I am unfortunately on the cliff of um, canceling Netflix because every movie is either dubbed in a different language or something I've already seen about a thousand times. So, And they have all the new stuff that's coming has no dates, no times. I have no idea when it's coming, and I'm not sitting around paying $13, $14 a month for movies that I don't ever watch. So I'm definitely tired of that. Um, and that's one reason why uh, Paramount's not bad, but it's 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 a ton of TV shows. It is a ton of shows, and that is what they try to make it like. Oh, it's movies. There's tons of movies. There's like a handful of movies. It's it's nothing like the library you get, which with HBO or with Netflix. Um, even Hulu yeah, has Netflix, a bigger movie I library than Paramount. I've watched anything on. <laughs> I really haven't. It's, it's, it's not it, much. I mean, there's, there's a ton a of oldies. Thing, but they keep taking off yes. all the good stuff. <laughs> uh, I think their market share is actually starting to reflect that. Uh, I would because, imagine so. <laughs> and, I mean, at first it was great because it was the whole idea of you can get rid of cable. You can watch whatever you want. Right. You can binge the show. And now you have, like, I, I – now you have uh, CBS All Access. Yeah, yeah. Or just, every you know. week we're going to drop a new episode. Mm -hmm. Or and they, uh, they're Disney really good at that. You know, we're gonna drop an episode, and so now you've got three or four uh, subscriptions. Yeah. So you basically just bought online cable. Pretty much, yeah. That's basically yeah. what you did. Um, but some of them have better things. Yeah. yeah. Netflix doesn't have much. CBS. I mean, I I have them for a few 
shows. You know, yeah. CBS has they have some Discovery, really good shows. Has really good Star shows. Card. Yes. Uh, Disney Plus has. I mean, I'm chewing through all the Marvel movies. Well, and, and I should say, Falcon and Winter Soldier and Loki. Yes. Has, um, Scarlet Witch, all of this stuff, and then HBO Max. Yeah, I would. I have really to funny. say, I think that it, oh, and Amazon Prime because you can get anything yeah. on Prime. Okay, so really between the the, the major streamers, I want to say that Paramount slash CBS, it, this is their take on HBO. They have been trying to take down HBO as a TV show series like Games of Thrones and True Blood and all those crazy series. Flight of the Concords was one of my favorite comedies growing up. Also an HBO show. All HBO shows. And that's the key, is that they were shows, and they all won awards, and this is what made HBO such a premier, you know, whole studio by its its own self. And so CBS has really been beat up by the daytime and, you know, the soaps and stuff, and I think they're tired of that. And so that's where Discovery, Picard, uh, The Stand, all of these million dollars if not billions of dollars i know discovery was a massive massive undertaking um and uh, same with picard i mean they are throwing so much money into these that this is it, oh, they're yeah. i mean it dwarfs what hbo spends uh, on their stuff and and you can see the quality difference too it's nothing like a soap opera i will tell you that you know what i mean so cbs has definitely kicked it up a notch um, and unfortunately, it's all just been rebranded with Paramount on it now, uh, which they're the same company. So literally, if you see something that says Paramount, you're paying CBS and vice versa. That's just how this goes. They work together. Uh, but now they're trying to go after HBO. And now, technically, you could have said the same thing with Netflix, but Netflix literally threw us every kind of uh tv show and movie that they could think of in the last like two or three years and i think that burned us all out because about half of them that were good got canceled and the other half that were bad stuck around for some reason and now they're trying to sift through the the good and bad that's left and it's just a mess like oh god netflix you really screwed up wing and firefly when i used to be able to watch them on there oh my god that was why i had that yeah (laughs) <laughs> I hear you, man. I really, really hear you. The only reason I still and have it is Stranger is Things. Okay. Now, Apple TV. I can't I, even stand on it. Cause... I see advertisements for a lot of stuff on there. Like on YouTube, I'll get an ad right. for something on Apple TV. And most of it, I look at and think, that doesn't look very good. Thank you. But I, I, they must be enticing people in some way because there are a few. Oh, yeah. I, My cousin's like in love with his Apple like, TV. I want to get it. I don't Just see you apparently um, why <laughs> why do I need it I have every all these devices do the same thing <laughs> but you know there's, they don't have well, a Apple yeah I, shows. Again, I there's no app right for Android. no no you have or to the, have the or Apple or TV or to TV, watch so the only way for me to watch Apple TV is going to be through a browser right and I I don't know first world problems right but, yeah that's exactly what this is <laughs> I have a remote. I really don't want to have to get up and use my computer's keyboard and mouse. Right. I also want the wireless so that I have to have four devices surrounding me just to watch. <laughs> exactly. That doesn't make any but sense. There's a there's a show on there. It's, right. Um, it's the one about the moon and the U.S. versus the space race. Basically, I forget what it's called, but that looks really good i don't know that one um i think i know what you're talking about though i did i did do remember the, seeing uh, uh the commercial for it um crap i cannot think of that name all i keep thinking of is hidden figures which is kind of in the same boat but a totally different story so and also a really good movie on disney plus uh definitely for go check mankind. that out for That's all mankind yeah that looks really good there have been some shots that i've seen very high quality they look really intriguing um, so I might maybe just get, you know, a monthly trial and <clears throat> plow through the first two seasons. Right. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I, the whole, okay. So if you go back to Steve Jobs, his, one of my favorite, favorite quotes from him was, uh, I was one of the, the uh, news reporters, I can't remember if it was NBC or whatnot. They were asking him about streaming services. And do you think this is going to become a, uh, a fad in the future and, and should tv do this and yada yada and i remember there was a direct quote that said that they he never wanted 
you know, Apple um, or any of them to get into that streaming service stuff because uh, it would start dividing up all of the companies. And that is legit <laughs> what you are seeing to this day. Since Netflix took off, now you have all of the major studios releasing their own streaming service, you know, uh, from Disney. Including Apple. Now, yes, too. and that's. I'm sure Jobs is not happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure he rolled over a couple of times. I told them no. I told them no. Throwing things in his casket. I can only imagine. So, you know. <laughs> After the signature rant from the dead. <laughs> screaming. <sighs> but, yeah, no. I mean, he's just. I really felt bad because, I mean, I really felt like they betrayed their own maker at that point. You can't go back you can't like you know oh sorry we're taking back apple tv we're not doing that anymore you guys have enough set top boxes you know screw that no that's legit what app or steve was saying though is that this race is going to be technically who wins the spot in your a, a home entertainment system or or yeah. center you know um and right now i gotta say xfinity won mine because they gave me this tiny little $20 box that you plug in um, and it connects to your Wi-Fi and voila, you get all of the streaming services through this one little box. And so I don't have to have a computer um, or a home theater system, which actually the Dell you see back there um, was my uh, home theater uh, system. And now I don't need that anymore. <laughs> if I want to live stream something, I can plug that back into my, my TV and then I can watch something uh, as a live stream, but I don't, it's a lot of work. That's a PC. I don't want to haul that thing around. And, have, you know, we have an Amazon fire TV so we can download apps. Same thing for all that. And I have all of the streaming ones downloaded. I might be able to get an Apple, uh, TV app on there. I'm going to look, mm -hmm. but everything else, YouTube and all the different inputs, outputs, obviously. So, Oh, here's a flashback for you nice. too. Even the remote, like those are becoming standard. Um, pretty much right. any, well, any TV that you buy today is most likely a smart, a smart TV, TV of one type or another. Yep. And so things like the uh, like um, the Google the little Chrome Google dongle, thing. yeah, the Chrome dongle, yeah. Um, those are probably going to yeah. be phased out. The Amazon Fire Stick is probably they're going to probably phase that out once yep. enough people have Amazon TV. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, because if you don't have an Amazon TV, you have a different smart TV, so you don't need the Fire Stick. Right. Right. And so Google, uh, Chromecast is what it's called. Um, there's also Roku. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and TiVo just came out with a streaming stick, actually. It's like a, you plug it in, and it's supposed to record your shows for you still. And then once you, just like the original TiVo, once you watch them, it deletes it. You know, you only could get 24 hours, kind of like the old school. Streaming, you don't need to worry anymore. That's what so I'm like, this makes no, no sense. No point of like, Maybe... It, Maybe it all. Maybe it does that. No, it's supposed to do that for well. for your live TV show too. So you could get like you or yeah. you, like the YouTube Live and, and, and all the different you know Hulu Live and stuff, and then you can record that like you used to be able to. But now it's this tiny little box that hangs off the back of your TV. And nobody even knows it's there. But it just doesn't. Why? This is the age of streaming. If you're not going to watch it live, wait 24 hours to 48 hours. Guaranteed it's going to be on a streaming service, either by mm -hmm. the provider that put it out originally or by its sister company, whoever owns the rights to the show, vice versa. So if Netflix has that one or Hulu has that one, uh, I, I own Hulu. Tonight, my favorite show comes on Fox, which is The Masked Singer. I don't have a way to watch it live other than streaming it on my computer which I don't mind doing, but it's not a comfortable chair. So I don't do it. And I wait the 24 hour window and voila, I can watch it on Hulu live. And it still counts if you watch it within the 24 hour, all the ratings go um, to count towards that particular. So that's show. what works with the whole Nielsen rating system. Yep. Yep. That's, yep. that's how okay. that works. That's interesting. So, Cause that is, well, um, you don't really need that rating system when it's streaming. Cause, cause it gets all a direct count. Just, by the server it knows exactly how many watched it when and how for how long all and all that jazz yep yeah. <laughs> but super cool to know still now to get more live show streaming would be cool or yes please even if you i don't know it well i know paramount was pushing the the sports you can watch a lot of live sports on the paramount plus app now i don't I'm sorry, I don't care enough about sports to, to try to pay extra money to watch them on my TV. If I really wanted to care that much, I'd go to the game. Um, 
if I could. And the problem you know? is you don't get all of, like the nightly or daily stuff no. on any of these services. So if like if you want to watch Jeopardy, like I. I am enjoying watching these guest uh, stars. Some of oh, them God, I wasn't yeah. very happy with. Some are great. Uh, very actually on that. Uh, was it Katie Couric? I think was really great on there. Ken Jennings was mm-hmm. wonderful as a host. Yep. This new guy that's like the producer of Jeopardy, he's bland. I don't care for him. Um, then they had Doctor Oz on for one or two, and that was. Like, why did you get... Why, just one of, just give it to LeVar. Get, give it to LeVar, Burton. Okay, please. The whole show is about facts and I mean, remembering things. And he's freaking reading Rainbow. <laughs> spouting a bunch of pseudoscience. And yeah, he might technically be a doctor, but half the stuff he talks about on his show, you should not do. Or it's like, oh, uh, mm-hmm. essential oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or or no. have you you know do some yoga no, and Burton eat healthy. Wants to be it, and everybody wants Lavar Burton to be the host, and I am one hundred percent on board. Give Lavar Burton. I would Burton love to see him the as show. the final uh, host. Yeah, he would be incredible. I mean, either that, or just because she's going to live forever, I want to at least for one episode. I want to see Betty White as a guest <gasps> host. Yes, yes. And Whoopi Goldberg. Like, oh there yes! So many people up um, oh for my gosh! Jeopardy. Queen Latifah. But imagine that <laughs> Will <Ryan> Ferrell. <laughs> they need to get Will Ferrell just to complete. Welcome to cycle. Jeopardy. <laughs> and, but they don't. No, they don't need Will Ferrell. They need Will Ferrell up there as his Alex. Yes, person. yes, they do. I yes, think they do. Alex would have loved to see that. Yes, because he Actually, Alex they, did one of the SNL uh, things. He, he did, and and, and congratulated him, and it was he loved it. Oh, no, he loved Will it. Ferrell as Alex Trebek doing a guest host episode. Uh, change that or somebody get that petition. Somebody going. get that, that going happen. right now Before on Reddit, they get please. The final host. Let's make that happen. I'm sure uh, somebody yes. has, had, was, had, or somebody at SNL has reached out. I would said, hope hey, so. Can we do this with you guys? I mean, come it had to on. Have been tossed around in a brainstorming meeting. And I mean, poor. I, not not to throw that on Mr. Farrell. Uh, I mean, he. I. I he, this, I think this could be huge. We all remember him for different things. I know a lot of my old friends used to remember him from Elf, because um, that's a huge, huge role that stuck around. Um, and I, I mean, I've seen everything from Anchorman to most of the newer stuff to um, a lot of the stuff that nobody's even seen. The one he filmed here in Michigan. Um, I always forget the name of that one. It's the basketball one. Uh, Super oh. Super Bowl or something. But it wasn't about the Super Bowl. It was like something totally different. Um, don't remember. Crap, that was a long, long time ago. I even went to see the theater, see, saw that one uh, like the night it came out, because um, it was a Michigan filmed movie. So that's like a huge deal here, here in Michigan. Like we don't get a ton of. It's a beautiful state, and they don't film anything here. Oh, so <laughs> they they filmed a decent amount of things. I know there was a Michael Sarah movie that uh, had a few scenes in Ann Arbor. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Um, I'll I'll send you the clip later. It's I forget what the movie was about, but there's a point where a car, does, like the brakes fail and it's on a hill and it rolls back into a building and the building blows up. <laughs> it was actually filmed, and I've I've looked at it. They built a false front uh, storefront. Oh, this building okay. That was an ice cream parlor. I worked. At. <laughs> I worked and in someone, it. Someone when they opened, someone had come in and said, "Hey, yeah, they filmed a movie here late. before," and I looked for it, and it was. Sorry, the cat's yeah, being naughty. It was filmed right there. Uh, George Clooney did a movie. Uh, wow. In Ann Arbor, at some point. Um, well, know, come over to Grand Rapids, Andy, people. Andy, we got it's beautiful over uh, here. The roof. And they looked down and they could see what was going on. Um, <laughs> there was a movie called Kalamazoo with an yep, exclamation I, point. Yep, I did see that, that yeah. Which I have yet to see. I heard it wasn't that good, but it's Kalamazoo, so... It's just like Kalamazoo! <laughs> it's, it can't be worse than the core. It's exciting, but it's, it's worse than the core. <laughs> <laughs> At least the core, you have something to pick apart. Kalamazoo doesn't really give you that option. It's really not that bad of a no. movie. If I remember correctly, it was a, a, this, like a reuniting of like these friends, and I think one of them had cancer or something like that. Yeah. Um, but they filmed the original Sweetwaters. No, yes. No, no. By the way, everybody, Sweet- we're both from Kalamazoo. Uh, Sweetwaters is Sweetwater- amazing. Don't. 
are the best donuts oh, on the planet. They really so, are. Like, they're so good. And they're open right? 24 hours a day. I would go to Kalamazoo. I'd tell him to pick them yes, up some. Yes, I know. They won, like, year after year, best donuts in Michigan. They have apple fritters um, the size of your head, and they're, like, $2. <laughs> like, they're so <laughs> good. <laughs> when I first moved to Ann Arbor, oh. when, like, my first day there, I went walking through downtown to explore, and I saw a sign on a building that said, Sweetwater. Oh man, and it's not I the same. Lost my shit. Like, there's one in Grand Rapids too, but it's not the here? same thing. Yes, and I walk in. <laughs> it's Sweetwater's Cafe. Yes, that's what it is up here too. And it's not right. I, I just kind of hung my head. They don't even sell donuts. Out, say anything to anybody. I was so <laughs> upset that it wasn't my donut shop. Right. So. Oh my god, no, the one anyway, in Kalamazoo. Yeah. Um, she's yeah. been great for film, I think. Yeah. Um, we should uh, we should look into that. that yeah, that we'll definitely a, do a film episode a coming up here. Yeah, video of, uh, like what big films have been filmed in Michigan? Because honestly, outside that, I'm not aware of that many. I should. No, there was they a. I want to say it was one of the Wolverine. Uh, wasn't it Wolverine like Origins or something? They filmed like the first opening scene or something i think in detroit, in detroit or something like that well, yeah, the flint area don't okay if you're gonna come to michigan to film don't go to lansing or detroit go anywhere else in the entire state well, detroit's the big city you know? yeah but it's oh, look, gross Cop, and it's fun not, thing too. well it's been a while since well, robocop been. was not filmed in detroit no. and they totally could have um, I think some of the uh, Dark Knight series was filmed in Detroit. Now that I'm thinking, yeah, I don't that know makes why sense. Detroit wasn't in my mind, but now that I'm thinking about it, um, I don't know. I'm just. Oh, my cousin Noah is. Um, oh, hey. He says, but in Plainwell, Wesco donuts are awesome. Yes, they yes, are. they are. Those are really uh, good. I've had those too. They're not sweet ones. They, yeah, there's a difference. There's. Uh, they use like a the cake way, batter. Noah. Hello, good Noah. See you <laughs> thank you for joining us, and thank you for the comment. I really appreciate that. I love donuts. I don't have any today. I, I kind of all I want is sweet waters, and it's like an hour drive for me. <laughs> so it's I might take that chance. <laughs> I have done it before. Oh, God. It's so seriously worth it. This place is open 24 hours a day, usually 365 days a year. COVID definitely threw a wrench into all of that. But it is still 24 hours as far as I know. Uh, you Free Wi-Fi, so. free coffee. Uh, you just order a donut every now and then and they won't kick you out uh really nice people and it's all fresh it's all so made. fresh it's so good there. It's, it goes so fast it's, that it's it can't yeah, be donut. they have yeah. everything it's just so they got like cupcakes just coffees all kinds of talking about donuts god so. i love it sorry this is it's food <laughs> food obviously we're all hungry but anyway our last thing that we wanted to talk about was the hiv vaccine which is oh, yeah. a twist that i don't think anybody was expecting um, and I was well, going to pull up the article, but I finally got my computer staple, so I'm not pulling up the article because it will destroy that stability that we have here. So let's talk about this vaccine because this is huge news. You're telling well, it's, the world, I give you yet. like one or maybe two shots possibly, uh, and this could prevent you from getting HIV, HIV. which is unheard of. This is like groundbreaking i don't even know how this vaccine is going to be like viable you know what insurance is going to cover this you know what i mean well, like this the is thing. they've been um, expensive they've been working on uh hiv va uh, vaccine for ever uh, like decades they, right really <laughs> like trying to come up the problem is um with um i guess due to certain properties of the hiv virus it, it, it either changes, mutates, or our body just really can't fight it off well. Um, but I thought it was the, vaccines, the it's, it's hard, hard to do a stable anymore. antibody for as well. Like to have your yeah, body reproduce so, the antibody is almost impossible. But I mean, could be very wrong about that. I don't know. Maybe that's changed over the years. Against the virus in a way. Well, what they're, um, I, I dropped the article too. I I'm can't sorry. The company. We'll, we'll put it yeah, in the Yeah, I'll put uh, it in the link for sure. Antibody. But. Due to working with the COVID vaccine, yep, and that that is an mRNA vaccine. Yes, that's what I wanted to hit they on. They think that might be a viable solution mm -hmm. for an AIDS vaccine because what an mRNA vaccine does, and we'll get into this heavily in the COVID episode. Yeah, but basically, it 
teaches your immune system uh, to recognize what they call a spike protein, which is a protein on the outside of a virus that allows it to bind to um, Living cells tissues. in your body. Yep. So they the the mr mRNA vaccines that the um, Moderna and Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer no, they do not contain the virus. No, um, a lot of older vaccines would have a weak or, um, or like a dead virus, exactly. just to kind of show your body this is what the virus is. Here um, you go, uh, find so the you know make the like antibody. COVID, um, and because um, <coughs> the SARS-CoV, uh, what's it? SARS-CoV two. Mm -hmm. um, there have been coronaviruses. I believe the common cold is yes. caused by a coronavirus. Yeah. They call it that because it kind of looks like a crown. We get the term corona from that. Yep. But they can mutate so quickly. That makes it hard. But they're, they've noticed, um, and even with the variants of COVID mm -hmm. uh, coming out, those spike proteins, those mo change or evolve much less than the actual virus itself, yes. which is why these... Um, vaccines work against multiple strains yes and when, they're hoping that being if they can get an mr rna virus right to to uh, to work with a spike protein of hiv then it could theoretically work very well right so that's what it is no it doesn't alter your dna no mrna is called messenger rna messenger it's RNA, exactly it's RNA, going to the it, it's well, teaching all the other it, RNAs it how to do their job better. <laughs> saying, hey, that's what this looks like yep. when you see it attack it. Not here it is, try to attack exactly. it and get good at it. Yep. It's a completely different... Your immune system, system is broken down into really smaller teams, essentially. And, and the, RNA, the mRNA is technically part of that. You have uh, T cells and leader Ts. Uh, I have lazy leader T cells. So out of the, if you take three of my liter T cells and you put them into a, a teeny tiny petri dish with a virus, uh, one out of the three will just completely ignore it, which is a huge problem. And that's one reason why I'm, I'm considered immunocompromised is because I can get a cold very easily for almost no reason, mm -hmm. just because my immune system's a little lazy. But if it's a bacterial infection, all three will be like, oh my gosh, attack, attack, attack. So what the mRNA is doing is that it's going in and it's telling those leader T cells, hey, this is a new protein you need to pay attention to and you definitely need to attack it. Now, again, my immune system's already a little lazy, so only two of them are going to pay attention. <laughs> so it's a little sad, but this is but definitely how it works. How to do it, it's a lot better. I, I don't know. I just hate all of this stuff going on about the COVID vaccine again. I don't want to get too far. No, into it we have a full to... episode that's no, going to be broken down. It doesn't change but yes. your DNA. No, no, you're not getting a microchip. No. You can get COVID from it. Yes, you can still contract it, but you are much less likely to contract it. You fight it off more quickly. So less, less chance of spreading it. It's the best thing we can do. So you know, if you are capable of and medically capable of getting your vaccine get your vaccine please mask, do yes just suck it up people it's, it's not really bad. not that hard um and you know once we get to that <laughs> amino threshold I, I mean masks will be gone and things will definitely start going back to normal very quickly because we're getting there i know they said about half of adults 65 and over have uh, in the country have have pretty much gotten at least one shot which is huge, yeah, the percentage huge. Is, I think I saw it. Well done, everyone. I mean, that was a little slow, but I think uh, considering this is amazing. It, I, and... It's a lot faster than it could have been, too. And I, I'll say, I think I've said it in other videos, I'm. It, it's really nice going onto Facebook and seeing so many of my friends. I got my vaccine, yes. signing up now. Love that. And so to all of you, Thank you. All of my friends. I appreciate you. Please um, keep doing this. Spread the good news. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's not over yet. No. But, but applying this information to the HIV, and again, like like you mentioned before, HIV can mutate, and uh, but not the key proteins in, in every case. And that's where things get interesting in, in those key... Yeah, they mutate much less uh, often. So this is this is a potentially yeah, any, a stepping stepping point. Disease, you know. It like if 
with any disease, if there are fewer people infected and they're separated, that means there's less, much less likely right. a chance of them spreading it or infecting someone else. Considering how HIV spreads, you know, that it has to be through um, body fluids yes. or anything like that, <laughs> uh, sexually transmitted, it's a lot... A vac if they had an mRNA vaccine that worked for AIDS, I wow. feel it would be even much more effective than yeah. the COVID vaccine because it takes a lot more to give someone HIV than yes. it does to give COVID. Oh, yeah, yeah. A, a cough and a sneeze more. versus like, a needle to... prick is totally different territories here. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's a whole different uh, ball game. So, yeah, you know. Uh, it's just a, such a robust virus, and when you have it, it's so hard. Also, it can lie dormant. Yes, um, it can. And again, we've come great strides. It's no longer a death sentence. People can live full, healthy lives. Yeah, very much but so. It's still the, not, uh, I mean, we got third world problems all over the place, uh, and HIV is a huge wrench in that uh, engine. So that, Especially, well, yeah, in uh, under underdeveloped or absolutely um, and this vaccine could end that where they don't literally have the knowledge or access to things like you know condoms or right um or medical safety equipment and i, I mean it's, it's uh, not that they don't have it I, I blame a lot of the distributors and and uh manufacturers on that one i mean come on now we have the supplies it's and they're just I don't know. I, you know, they're waiting on that paycheck that I don't know. Come I mean, on, just money. stop looking at profits, like people. Other, These are people's lives. Episodes, you throw enough money at something and you're going to fix it. South Park did. Yes, that. yes, you, they did. They, Thank uh, you. Secure for ages a uh, injection of pure cash. God. Basically, that's what they were saying. If they give the researchers enough money, they'll have the time, <laughs> the people, the resources to figure it out. Yeah. Um, that's says, thank you for preaching vaccines. Yes. He's a doctor. Yes, this is, uh, he thank you. He said he'd love to get this mask off because I've been wearing one 10 to 11 hours a day since last July. Oh, Kurt, uh, thank you. you. Yeah, um, you are a trooper for sure. I, I, My ears have been pretty much in that same boat as well. I've been doing about 10, 12 yeah. hour days the last five days. So yeah, last yeah. night I was. I was you're a doctor, you're on the front You line, know, so you know though. You're doing. I had to wear one all the time because I'm working in a restaurant, but what you were doing was infinitely more important. Way more important. <laughs> My family are nurses. Yes. One, so I know what, like, you can't escape COVID. No. You couldn't. It'd be on news. It'd be on reports every day in the <laughs> right. hospital. It, you were in a hospital. <laughs> right. right. With, I mean. That takes a mental toll, too. Yes, it does. And that's where, like, everybody's burnout. I know that's why some of these people are Absolutely. just saying, screw it, I'm not going to wear a mask, I'm just going to keep going out. That is not if the right attitude to have. While, no, you've got to stick with yeah. it. This is the last long haul. I mean, we cannot go back to shut down. We can't. And I feel like Michigan's getting really close. My current it, restaurants, we have only, like, we had to shut down two, in uh, one in Allendale and I think one in Coopersville, because uh, uh, all the employees tested positive for COVID. Um, so we are one of the only restaurants still open right now. Uh, it was one we're reason why we're horizon. just getting killed every day because there's just lines of people trying to come and get food, which uh, we're not going to turn them away, but you got a 20, 30 minute wait because we don't have the staff to keep going. So it's it's a trick. I how, mean, do you, how do you make sure everybody in the line is six feet away? Exactly. That it, oh, well, we, we definitely police. We police everyone that comes in. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Scott. I forget his last name from Ant-Man. Oh. If he could endure two years of... Uh, what was it, two years of house arrest? Yes. I mean, you know, really could Yes. Then you can... <laughs> I forgot yeah. about that. Oh, he's playing I've the drums and stuff. Open, yeah. But and, uh, we have... <laughs> since... Uh, honestly, since uh, last... Um, what, May? St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. We have yeah. not dined in at a restaurant. Yes, we've gotten... Wow, really? Out. You know what? I haven't either, to not be honest with you. We've gotten carry out. Usually we get delivery and have it contact Wait. free at port. I mean, wait, does but dining in outside count? Because I sat out on a patio with my, and there was no one else out there other than me and my parents. I think it technically counts. We but still I mean, kept our masks on until we got our food. It doesn't upset me as much. Right. Just because it's a better environment. Right. But inside an enclosed space. Yeah, I haven't done that so yet. Do. I mean, I work and inside. Like Arbor has been yeah. really good. They've <laughs> been, uh, on the weekends, they shut, um, 
for Friday, right. for Friday, Saturday, even Sunday, they shut down pretty much all of um, Main Street and Liberty wow, downtown. Wow, really? Um, and that gives all of these restaurants so much more patio space. Oh, when okay. When I went there, we gained like 16 tables nice. in the patio. Nice, that would be and awesome. It helped them to kind of supplant their income to make sure that they could survive and keep paying the bills. And if it's right. summer, sit outside. Please. But in here, <laughs> nobody wanted to sit inside. Right. Nobody wanted to. Good. Because people here understand. Yeah, we've had some of the students trying to party. Any city is going to have that. That's going to have that. Uh, We're, yeah. For the most part, I've been really happy with how the citizens of Ann Arbor have handled this. I was going to say, I saw a um, group of four people walking their dogs yesterday, and they all had masks on while they were walking yep. down the street. And I, like, was so happy to see that because, I, I mean, even if one of them was vaccinated, I mean, she didn't have to have her mask or whatever on, but they all still had their masks on, and they're outside, and they were distancing a little bit, too. So of a viral load on her thank you. Go somewhere else thank you for that. Right. And that just yeah. helps. It helps everyone in that community because they're, I mean, they're just feet away from people's front porches, too. So, I mean, I mean, just like two or three feet. I mean, it's it, Grand Rapids is a pretty cramped city, so... You know, I mean, it's not, you don't got a ton of space. Uh, I mean, little, actually, I feel like Ann Arbor is spread out just a little bit more than Grand Rapids, but I guess it depends on where a you are, bit, too. So. But you still, even downtown, like, once right. you get to where downtown starts, basically, oh, like, you the train track, and everybody there has masks. In the neighborhood, <clears throat> Oh, I'm sure, so yeah, and that makes sense. That's not where most of the traffic is, but every day that I'm on one of my walks, if I'm walking on the same sidewalk and someone's coming towards me right one of us at some point will move to the road absolutely or to the bike lane or far enough away and every time at least in my experience every time we both kind of see each other and it's like a it seems like every three at about 300 feet you see that person yes. and you're like okay put the mask on yep and then you go past them, and then you can take it yep. off. I always um, give it a good at least 15 seconds of walking before I'm, like, removing it. You know, I want to make sure I'm – unless I'm upwind, then it's a different story. But, you know. <laughs> and every at you. Like, mm -hmm. in the neighborhoods I've gone through, if I do that and I walk past, I'll give them a nod. Yep. And they'll, yeah. You can tell they're smiling. Right. You can see it in the eyes. eyes. And yeah. you can tell they're saying, thank you. I appreciate you putting your mask on. Yeah. Um, if – and – Especially like around kids, if they're walking their kid in a Please, stroller, yes, I'll yeah. put my mask on, yeah. and I will wait further across the street mm -hmm. even then. And you see a lot of appreciation. People understand that we're all going through this. We're all in it together. Mm -hmm. to do what we do. Yeah, do what you got to do. I mean, this is a team <laughs> effort. We cannot do this without the help of a neighbor and your friends and all us everybody working together and so that's really a big deal and i know it has been forever and a day since normality and it's going to be longer only because again this process of getting vaccinations out uh is is a slow and steady process it, it's a it definitely happening uh i'm still waiting on my second shot which is uh two weeks two weeks uh the, i think it's the 24th or 25th i get my my next shot so really soon i'll be getting my next one definitely gonna be uh trying to film that one as much as i can and i'll be letting you guys oh, yeah. know no i did get our uh, our vaccine uh, episodes gonna be broken down into or i should say the covid19 episodes are broken down into separate ones so the first one that i've already filmed andrew's gonna be getting that edited up uh is going to cover uh, really basic safeties. We're talking about washing hands, wearing those masks, keeping your distance. Why is this important? And my mm -hmm. own personal history of uh, medical uh, mumbo jumbo and getting sucked into all of that crap and almost dying and all from a viral infection that was a very average infection. So again, I have a huge amount of history. My medical book is, is giant. Dr. Helgerson, who just commented, can actually back up everything I'm saying because he was one of the first few uh, on my case actually and was one of the ones that told me to go to the ER because no one could help me and I needed to go someplace that they could so that's where I went um and Maybe yeah you get him in uh oh yeah get him in for live show sometime and interview him definitely be a lot of fun definitely got to get uh, Mr. Halgerson I know he's a busy man <laughs> I'm sure we can find a time Funny hopefully <laughs> uh, maybe that that could maybe a then be an episode that we could pre-film oh, just yeah. to work around his schedule. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, 
Oh, that's what we're going to be bringing you guys soon too. Starting to do some interviews with people from different topics. Yes, um, and that'll probably just to get outside perspectives. We can yeah. do research, but we're never going to know it all. No. obviously, and we're probably going to botch a lot about these topics that someone who's an expert in that field yep. um, could do a lot better job. And that's so, why I'm I'm, I'm calling all hands here, especially for for that vax the talk. second vaccine people episode. Can- well, yeah, when we're starting to get into the vaccines and how they work and why is when I I'm, I really want to get into the, like the side effects and things. And then and Dr. Helgerson, I'm sure, will definitely be able to help with. Uh, I'm sure he's gotten all the pamphlets and had to go through all the, the medical readings and whatnot and briefings. And I'm, I'm sure it's an endless cycle. So, uh, and I'm sure all, all of, you know, I, I know you have uh, nurses and doctors in your family as well, um, Andrew. So I'm sure I, 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 my sister's a nurse. I'm sure she's gone through all of that as well. She even worked with um, the ICU uh, COVID-19 patients. So she's definitely gone through the ringer there. So I'm hoping to get a bunch of interviews. Um, if I can squeeze in the time, I'm definitely going to try to get these interviews uh, and get them all in an episode for you guys. It's probably going to be a month or two out here, but uh, there's probably going to be at least two to three COVID-19 episodes uh, breaking all of the different myths and things down because there's just a lot to comb through. Holy moly, that was a year. <laughs> it was a lot, of, a lot of fake news and a lot of real news, and it's a lot to comb through. So that's why we're really taking our time on those COVID-19 episodes. I'm not trying to delay or anything, but we just don't want to bring false information to light. Uh, and or spread uh, fake news. Uh, exactly. That's already a problem. A lot of so. fact checking, a lot, and yeah, yeah. I, I, that's when I don't want to say the wrong thing or edit the wrong thing or have something in there that's just not quite right. That yep. one has to be yep. 100%. Yep, and I agree. And that's why I have been double checking, cross check, triple checking. Talking about yep. a satellite. That's one thing. Right. If we give someone the wrong information about. Um, yeah. Not, again, we obviously we're not medical experts. We don't no. have one on. No. But yeah, this is these are going to be some big episodes. Yeah. Uh, probably graphics intensive. I'm going to have to spend a lot of time on those. My I'm sorry, probably, Andrew. <laughs> I don't have the newest system. So <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> it's, no, it, and if you watch the the inside your computer episode, you'll know what computer I'm running. We'll be doing an Apple inside computer um, episode as well. Um, when Andrew gets all situated, that'll be a couple months out. But that's also coming in the future. So new, really good stuff coming. Um, so definitely Anyhow. stick around, guys. I appreciate y'all. I think that's all we have for today. Um, again, if you have more comments. Uh, or questions, topics, uh, definitely check out our other episodes. Uh, I know we've we really kind of hit on a bunch today. We kind of hit on the history of computers, the inside your computer, the uh, I mean, just again, the list goes on. We kind of even had a Mandela effect a little bit because of the hollow earth and multi theories and yada yada. So, I mean, really kind of all kinds of good episodes. So, please check out our YouTube channel um, and our, our Facebook page. We got an Instagram page, we got, got it all. So, just check us out. And uh, leave us some comments. Let us know what you guys want to see in future uh, main episodes and or live episodes. And uh, we will definitely uh, do what we can to bring you guys the truth of the matters. uh, Because, again, that's really what we're here to do. So, again, I am William. And next to me here is Andrew. I appreciate you all for tuning in today. Uh, Definitely leave us some comments. Let us know what you like, what you didn't like. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Hopefully, we all learned something new today. And I will talk to you guys all later. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.